We're gonna take a little step into the bizarre side of chicken behavior today because I'm gonna talk about a chicken health condition that can sometimes just be weird and sometimes just be gross, but at other times can actually kill your chicken or even wipe out your entire flock. But the thing that makes this health problem so strange is that it's self-inflicted. It truly is a mental health disorder by definition, as you'll see. And it can happen at any time, at any place, to any flock. So what exactly is this peculiar mental ailment? It's called pica. But it's also known as the my chicken ate what? disorder. And according to Cleveland Clinic, pica is defined as a mental health condition where a person, or in our case, a chicken, compulsively swallows non-food items. While it's often harmless, swallowing certain items can make pica very hazardous. In other words, pica is a mental disorder in which your chickens eat inappropriate non-food items. So this can be poop. No, you gotta stop eating that poop, Minnie. That's disgusting. Don't do that. Don't do that. This can be sticks. This can be hardware like nails or screws. This can be grass that's too long. This can be feathers. But most commonly, it's their bedding. And if your chickens are eating just a little bit of their bedding or other soft non-food items, that's usually not a problem. In fact, my chickens pretty regularly will eat a small amount of bedding during their daily foraging. I can often just feel a little bit of it in their crops. And after years of keeping dozens of chickens, that little bit has never been a problem. The real risk is when they eat too much and not just because of nutritional deficiencies, if that's all or most of what they're eating, but because their digestive tract can get packed full of that bedding and then nothing can move through, nothing. That ultimately will result in either starvation or the digestive tract will rupture and the bedding will spill out into the salomic cavity, which is this part of the chicken, and that'll be the end of them. a lot of pica cases recently with people saying they've switched their bedding over to fresh hemp, fresh straw, or fresh wood shavings. And then their chickens essentially overdosed on it and were dead within a few days. And that's just one of the reasons that the risk for pica can actually be much higher this time of year, now that we're getting into the cold season and people are putting down new bedding. There are a couple other reasons for that too you'll see here, but before we get into all that, here's what you really need to know. Do not despair, because once you finish watching this video, you'll know how to prevent the majority of cases of pica, and then for the rest of the time, you'll know when to keep an eye out for this disorder and what to look for so you can intervene before it becomes fatal. And finally, if all else fails, you'll learn how to treat an affected bird. But first, the obligatory disclaimer, I'm not a vet, I'm not a poultry scientist, I'm a weird, nerdy chicken lady who lives in the back hills of Idaho. Do with that what you will, talk to your own vet, do your own due diligence. Okay, now that that's out of the way, saddle up, because you are about to take a trip into the disgusting, the unbelievable, and the bizarre side of chicken behavior. reasons I want to talk about pica right now is because I just nearly lost one of my chickens to it. Meet Elvira. Hi Elvira. Now if you've been watching my videos for a while you're thinking to yourself of course it's Elvira. It's always Elvira. Hi bye. Because I have featured her in so many of my videos just because she is so nutty. Hi. 
Avira has always been problem child number one in my flock, but she more than compensates for that by never ceasing to make me laugh. And by occasionally being surprisingly sweet. Okay, so back to her pika. I'm gonna show you up here exactly what she ate. She ate this, gravel. The gravel lines the floor of her chicken run. There's bedding on top of it, but if you dig down deep enough, you'll find the gravel. And this nearly killed her. So here you can see the rocks. Why this is so crazy is because some of these shouldn't have been able to pass through her digestive system at all. And yet you can see in the x-rays that they've made it not only into her mouth and down her throat, but they made it all the way down into her intestines. I seriously cannot understand how my chicken ate this and didn't choke to death. Look, look at this one. Look at how big that rock is. It's about this size. Do you know how narrow a chicken's esophagus is? It's like a straw. Now, I know this because I actually necropsy my chickens after they die. Yeah, I know it's weird, but I've seen dozens of esophagus, esophagus, esophagi, throat tubes. Point being, this doesn't work because physics. My vet was also flabbergasted, but she said she was still at high risk of dying, that there was still a decent chance that these rocks would be stuck in her intestines and that we might be looking at euthanasia. Bye. But in the end, I decided to try treating her because Elvira has a little secret. This secret allows her to cheat death in a way that no other chicken can. She may look like a full-blooded chicken to you, but she is actually part cat. <laughs> And I know this because she has nine lives. She has used probably five or six of them by now. She seriously has been on the brink of death more times than I can even count. Every time I believed there was no way she was gonna recover, but she's just somehow this little miracle bird who always pulls through. I'm gonna come back to Elvira at the end of this video. I'll let you know what we did for her, how that turned out, how you can do the same. But I wanna to talk to you first about why Elvira might have done this to herself in the first place and why your chickens might too. So let's look at exactly what triggers this pika behavior. And I found that there are really two major things. The first I hinted at already, and that's overexcitement. This occurs when their foraging instincts go into overdrive, so it's most likely to occur when you put down new bedding. They get so excited about the new bedding, they're kicking through it, they're foraging, and they end up eating too much of it. Your chickens may be especially at risk for this if you rarely give them new bedding. So for example, one way some people do the deep litter method is by only giving their chickens new bedding once or twice a year. The problem with this is sometimes that old bedding is so used that the poop to bedding ratio is really high and chickens aren't crazy about that. I always like to look at how mother nature intended for chickens to live. It's called the jungle method of raising chickens. Once you realize chickens are inherently jungle birds who spend their days foraging over several acres of the forest floor, you'll see that mother nature never intended for them to live in their own feces like they do today. Now we can't fully get away from that when we're raising our chickens in confined spaces like a coop or sometimes an enclosed run if you're not able to free range. But one of the reasons chickens are gorging themselves on new bedding is because this fresh, clean material is what they'd be getting to forage in in nature and it's what they want. They don't want poopy bedding. only you know what method of chicken keeping is best for your circumstances, but if you are doing the deep litter method, you can help prevent pica by adding smaller amounts of fresh bedding to the top of your deep litter more frequently, rather than only adding bedding once or twice a year in one big fell swoop. 
And I'll give you some more ideas on how to prevent pica if you're using the deep litter method or not. But first I want to get to the second trigger, which is stress. And this is likely the most common cause. This can be physical stress, like they don't have access to clean food or water that can make them start eating their bedding. Or it can be mental stress, like winter boredom, which you might be seeing now, or being moved to a new space or integrating with other chickens, things like that. So we know from the jungle method of chicken keeping that chickens are incredibly territorial. These aren't migratory birds. So anytime you move them to a new space, which them is a new territory, that's gonna cause an immense amount of stress. So for example, moving chicks from their brooder to their permanent coop, that's a change in territory. Or if, like I did last year, you end up moving to a new place, you take your chickens with you, that's a new territory. And your birds can respond to that stress in many different ways. A lot of times they'll end up being more aggressive with each other simply because that anxious energy has to go somewhere. But pica is another way that that stress can manifest. Oh, don't eat that poop, Minnie. Ugh. No, Minnie. Oh, she's a pain in the butt. I threw that poop out of here. Minnie. Yeah, I guess I know better than to throw stuff out, huh? Because then it must be good. Yeah, Minnie Mouse. No, you gotta stop eating that poop, Minnie. That's disgusting. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'll give you a little more time. I'm gonna put you back in the coop if you're gonna eat your poop like that. If you're wondering what caused Elvira's pica, I think it was physical stress. That day I took her to the vet where you saw those x-rays and they showed she had this pica disorder. Well, the reason I took her to the vet was because her crop wasn't emptying. And this actually isn't the, she's getting food everywhere. She shakes her head, including my face. Um, this problem with her crop emptying is actually a long-term problem with her. It happens on and off. Uh, We've seen the vet many times about it. The vet doesn't know why it's happening, but just for some reason, food stops moving through her digestive system. Everything just stalls. But when this happens, we have to put her on a medication that gets her gut flowing again. Oh my God, you're making a mess. Yeah, cluck cluck. Good girl, bye. And so this medication is actually what she's eating right now. I mixed it into her food this morning. And at this point, she's going to have to be medicated like this every morning for the rest of her life. So my best guess for her pica disorder is that she just wasn't able to digest food. And, and we all know that chickens need grit to digest food. They eat these little rocks to act as grit, uh, which breaks up the food in their gizzards. So I don't know if maybe she just ate these bigger rocks because the little rocks weren't working and she was just desperate, or if maybe she was just kind of compulsively eating stuff she shouldn't have been eating simply because her stomach was so off. Or if it was, this is just another of her eccentricities. I mean, I really don't know, but my best hypothesis is that it was this digestive stress. So how can you prevent pica in these kind of situations where stress is really high or chickens are just really bored? You give them something else to do and you give them something else to eat that's actually edible and that's more interesting to them than their bedding or poop or whatever it is they're eating that they shouldn't be eating. So foraging activities are extremely important. The more foraging your chickens are able to do in general, the less likely they are to eat their bedding. So if your chickens can't free range, you can do things like hanging vegetables for them, growing sprouts for them, or if your bedding's not too old and poopy, you can simply throw feed into the bedding for them to forage for. 
They love to forage for feed in their bedding, even if the same feed is freely available in a feeder. This is called contra freeloading. It keeps them busy for hours on end. And I have another video that covers that topic in depth, so I will link to that below. And then another thing you can do is you can give your chickens lots of little bowls of wet chicken feed or even fermented feed if you're into that. I'm way too lazy, so what's as good as it's gonna get here. But I always do this during transition periods when I know my chickens are gonna be really stressed out, like they move to a new place or I'm integrating new chickens into an established flock. That really stresses them out. And I always do this if I think my chickens might be overexcited about new bedding. The reason I do this is twofold. First, the chickens love that wet food more than pretty much anything. And so they're less likely to overeat their bedding if it's around. And second, because the wet food really lubricates their digestive system. So if they are eating a bunch of bedding, there's a lot better chance that it's just gonna flow right through them rather than get stuck and impact their digestive system. So let's get back to Elvira. What did we do to treat Elvira? And what can you do if your chickens eat so much bedding that it's not coming out? There actually is a really simple treatment for this. It's laxatives and lots of them. Elvira actually had a prescription laxative to move those giant rocks through, but I actually did find a research paper that recommends an over-the-counter solution. And that is to feed your chickens wet feed with a little bit of molasses and a little bit of Epsom salts mixed in. In the research paper, chickens were dying from eating too much really long grass bedding. So the scientists tried this combo of wet food, molasses, and Epsom salts, which did successfully flush the bedding from the bird's digestive systems and the chickens stopped dying. I'll link to that paper below if you wanna see more details on how to do that. But if you're wondering about Elvira, she obviously did survive her pica incident. She used another one of her nine lives. She's a little worse for wear, but she's still out there clucking. You clucking? Bossing everybody around. And otherwise being her nutty, eccentric self. is just one of the many common ailments that can strike your chickens. If you want to learn more about some of the other most common chicken health problems, check out my video here and linked below on chicken illness and euthanasia for beginners. Happy chickening!